What's up everyone? Today we're headed to Marin County to visit the Moss King of Northern California, Jay McDonald. When we get there, we'll do a little tour of the garden and uh, check out some of the some of the moss work of Mr. Moss. Here we are at my new shop uh, slash homestead. I uh, just moved in in July and uh, built this whole shop in six months. But I'm pretty proud of what I have to work with now. Uh, my shop before was not artistically uh, endowed. I'm the son of an architect. So I pride myself on presentation is everything. This one here, I'm particularly proud of. This is a tanuki that I built 20 years ago. I built it in 01. It was two junipers that I got from Bill Costellan and a fabulous piece of deadwood that I acquired from Frank Bardella. I have a full chronology of pictures with that one of how I built it. You know, I always uh, tell people it is a tanuki, but it's, uh, it's one of my best trees, and it's one of the ones I'm most proud of, because that one's all me. Granted, I had a little help from Mother Earth with that piece of wood. It's been fun to own that one. This one's gonna be my next tanuki that I uh, tee off on. By the way, I am a golfer. <laughs> Some of my other pieces, maple, cork oak. This is where the magic happens. This is my shop. I uh, like to have an orderly place to work in and uh, I've almost put as much time into building or into decorating as I did building. I had I made myself a tokenoma because I do a lot of pictures uh, texting. I'm not not an emailer but I text a lot of pictures. So it's uh, it's just been a pleasure to work in my new shop. It's very comfortable. I have a heater and good lighting. It's been a far cry from what I had before. I'm uh, thoroughly enjoying it. A couple other of my pieces, weeping birch, liquid amber, the last couple leaves just hanging on. Some of my moss that I collected there. And then this is my Deer protected bonsai compound. Uh, the deer are very prevalent here on this site. And so I had, that was the first thing I did before I built anything was uh, the deer fence. So I could move. Uh, my plants get, uh, or my trees I should say, get a lot more consideration than even myself. So we put the, put the, the, the fence up with the, with the thought in mind that uh, seeing through the fence to the, to the bonsai was paramount. I'm a, a, a firm believer that you should have just as many deciduous as you do conifer or even more so in the deciduous category. Uh, I've seen many collections where it's juniper upon juniper upon juniper and granted, they're great trees, but it gets a little monotonous, I think. I think uh, having lots of deciduous, first and foremost, they really show the seasons. Uh, there's nothing like flowers in the spring, fall color, the winter silhouettes. It's, uh, it's what I, you know, really do bonsai for, is seeing the seasons in my trees. But you got to have conifers too to break up the lines of foliage. We'll go in, check a few more trees. Uh, this one here is a, a buckeye that my brother dug back in the uh, early 2000s. Uh, I did a little trade with him. I helped him remodel his, his shop. And uh, 
I said, you're paying me with that, and it's not up to negotiation. <laughs> um, another, uh, another California native, California there, I acquired from uh, the oldest member of the Marin Bonsai Club. Uh, he had it kind of laying over on its side, and I tipped it up and made it much more vertical. And uh, I think it's a much better tree for it. And then the redwood, just beyond, uh, that's, a, that's a good tree. I sold that tree a while back, but I uh, do quite a bit of maintenance on it for the owner. I like natives. Uh, you know, there's nothing, nothing better than telling a native story of how it was dug or, or uh, grown. Um, an olive, uh, that was done uh, I went to a Kevin Wilson workshop and he assisted me with the carving. This whole side of the tree was alive and he said it's going to be a much better tree if you get rid of that straight. That used to be a straight flagpole of, of live tissue and we killed it off and carved it up and it's one of the best decisions in bonsai I ever made. This was a, a very old tree when I procured it. And uh, I've had it for at least 18 years. Uh, I think it could be a little bit longer than that. This was a fig that used to be as wide as I could reach. I had 82 figs on it one year. I sold it to one of my bonsai cohorts. He cut a root out of the root ball that was that big around and killed two thirds of the tree. So I bought it back at a very reduced price. And uh, uh, he had it, he said he had no figs on it. I had it for six months and ended up getting 12 the first year. So it's, uh, it's on the road to recovery, but uh, one more reason to uh, give your trees lots of food. Uh, and if they're fruiting or flowering, a very high middle number. Uh, there's nothing, nothing more disappointing than having a fruiting and flowering tree that doesn't fruit or flower. Uh, I use miracle Grow. Uh, a lot of people scoff at the step, but um, it'll produce fruit and flower like you can't believe. Uh, here I've uh, procured some uh, high caliber moss from uh, one of my moss ranches. Um, I've got a I've got a raft that I have to prepare for a show that I have coming up. So, um, I'm going to show this at my next show. I spent two and a half to three days uh, prepping the foliage, wiring, pruning. So, I'm going to start uh, to get the soil wet here and, uh, and a little food. And I'm going to try to keep from getting the rock wet because that is the feature piece of the landscaping, if you will. So, uh, I think we're moist enough to receive the silver velvet. I'm going to be cutting through a lot of dirt and stuff, so I take a pair of scissors that isn't uh, real important or new because the dirt obviously dulls the edge. Certainly good enough for cutting dirt. This is my most important tool in the moss collection. What I do, it, most of the places where I, I get my moss is actually on cement that has collected silt and the moss grows out of the silt. I have been accosted by the police many times um, because I'm in an area <laughs> that pedestrians should not be uh, uh, in that area. Tweezers, you, you always have a use for those. And then the most important tool, this is the chopstick. And what I use this for is tucking the edge of the moss. Uh, what I tell all my students, no muddy edges on the, on the moss. So I looked over my uh, conglomeration of 
good moss here, and I picked out a couple of um, key feature pieces. I'll install those first and then build off of those. And this is so bright that I'm going to install this down in a dark area, which is right under the rock here. And that way it's in the shadow, but it's so bright that you really see it. completed the landscaping on the Juniper Grove. Uh, as you can see, I wanted to show as much of the rock as possible here, here, back here. There's some poking out up underneath here. Um, I'm very proud of. Um, I'll, I'll apply some, uh, what I use is uh, liquid gold spray to the pot and the stand uh, and then wipe them off and I'll do that two to three days before the show so it has time to kind of settle down sheen wise and uh, then this will be ready to marvel the multitudes. Anyway, um, there we go. Ready for show. Get me to the show. I'm sick of this pandemic. <laughs> I love bonsai. It's, uh, it's such a great way to spend your extracurricular time and uh, I've actually made a, made a career out of it. So, welcome to my world. Hope you enjoyed my little tour of my little world. Adios. <laughs>